Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to the first uh, Hockey Thursday Talks hosted by Inline Hockey. Uh, before we start, um, I would ask you to please leave your mic muted for the duration of the talk so everyone can hear properly. And if you have any technical questions or issues, uh, please use the written chat. Um, also, I would like to inform you that the Hockey Thursday Talks will be recorded. Uh, just so you are aware. Uh, and after the talk, we'll be taking the questions at the end, uh, if you have some. Thank you. So my name is Ken Moussab, and today we'll have our first guest uh, in the series. Uh, please welcome Michael Crean. Uh, he's the captain of the men's national team, coach of the under-16 national team, and chairperson of the IHI. Uh, so well, hello, Michael. Um, let me just unmute you here. All right, so we're glad to have you here. How are you doing? Oh, Michael, can you can you speak? We can't seem to be hearing you. So a little technical difficulties here, so. All right, for, for those who just joined us, uh, we are having a couple of technical difficulties. Uh, just wait on Michael. He was busy as possible these days and um, Getting a bit bored at home, but it is what it is, and we're going to do these things to try and stay stay healthy, and hopefully it's back to normal as soon as possible. All right. So, um, can you give us a little background first on on your journey as a hockey player from your junior years on, until now? Yeah, for me, it started uh, going to Belfast Giants games as a kid, and I played a bit of ice hockey, but never really stuck at it, and then discovered in line in Bangor, my hometown, and I've been at the Chiefs ever since. Um, playing, was lucky enough to play with a great group of guys that have sort of grown up together in hockey and we all still play together at seniors. And it's pretty much the story it is for in terms of club hockey. I'm sure you're going to get into national team stuff a bit later. Absolutely, yeah. So just a little question, because so, so you, you discovered hockey by just watching the, the Belfast Giants games, right? What was yeah. your first impressions? Because I'm sure like many of the young players here just uh, started pretty much in, in the same way by uh, watching some games. Yeah, it was just uh, something completely different. Like before that, I really just sort of played football and the, sort of the traditional sports, but they were never really that interesting for me. And then the hockey was just a lot more interesting than anything else I tried before and just so, sort of fell in love straight away. I guess most of us can share the, the same uh, experience in some ways. So um, I'm going to switch right away to uh, to the national team. Uh, so so you're a captain of the national team and you have participated, um, for those who don't know, in the, in the last two editions of the World World Games uh, organized by World Skates, uh, one in Italy and the last one in, in Spain. Uh, so how has, how has been the experience for you and, and what were the lessons you learned uh, as a player, but most importantly also as a captain? Yeah, actually my first Ireland was in 2013 in the WHF qualifiers okay. in Germany and 
that was a bit ironing playing on a, a big rink for the first time and it was the team was kind of put together late notice and it was little preparation but it came together and everyone kind of learned a lot of lessons that time and, and the guys that then stuck around to 2018 I'm sure learned a lot going into Asiago in Italy and again it was pretty much an experienced team in Italy and we're just constantly learning how to play the game at a a bigger stage it was we're used to small ranks in Ireland and then it's a completely different game on the bigger surface and you're all about possession and we kind of got our eyes open and a lot in Italy and then in Barcelona we probably a lot more prepared and how we wanted to set out and play as a team and play as a unit but we came up against some really good teams and we didn't really results wise improve but the way we played and how we felt as a team were huge steps between 2018 and 2019. Mm-hmm. And so you, you spoke about the, the, the main uh, challenge was also the, the, the big rink that we don't have in Ireland. So what do you do as an, uh, the Irish national team, uh, senior team, to prepare uh, for that in advance? Um, there's not really much you can do on the rink over in Ireland. So a lot of the preparation is sort of talking how we want to play. And most of the systems we we ran, it's difficult to run on a small rink. So and our mindset is if we can make this sort of work on a small rink, then it should be a lot easier on the big rink. But it's um, really thinking about how we want to play on the bigger rink. And then before we went to Barcelona last year, the playoffs in Gormanstown, we're lucky to get about an hour, an hour and a half on the big rink in Gormanstown to go through our systems and then and when you get out, when you get to the World Championships, it's fast and flat. You have one training session of about 40 minutes. So there's not much prep time when you get there. So you, all your prep has to be done before you go out. I see. Yeah. So, so you, you said, and I would like to come back also on, on, the, uh, on the fact that you are with a, a group of players that, are, that you have known for, for years and with creating a tight group, a group uh, team spirit. And so I, I think I believe that as a captain, you, you have to uh, really uh, support the, the teammates and show an example. Uh, now, if to go into a little bit more details, in your opinion, what are the most important qualities the, a captain of a hockey team should have? The qualities are probably would vary a lot from team to team. Like I'm not going to be the kind of guy that comes in and gives you this inspiring speech of what we're about to go and do. Like, me as a captain, I just kind of go and lead by example and play hard every shift and don't take a minute off and just ensure guys are there to pull pull their way too. Um, the main things are that you're going to turn up and you're going to work hard in every every practice, every team meeting. You're hundred percent focused. Every game, your game day, you're focused from the morning you wake from the moment you wake up to the end of the game, and you're leading by example. You're never taking a shift off you're playing the way the team wants to play you're not making silly mistakes and you're motivating guys rather than rather than having a go at guys for making a mistake you're making sure you ha- they they know you have their back and you're gonna you, you know they're capable of being contributed contributing members of this team mm-hmm. so yes and I, I think that what, what you said about um uh, motivating guys and even in because in the hockey game uh, mistakes happen uh, I think that's very important for all the young players here to to truly um, know that because I think that's uh, some kind of little mistakes that we have in youth of hockey where we don't necessarily uh, uh, try to support our players straight away it doesn't come always naturally so so I think that that was a very important point um, now um, I would like to to go back also some on some of the the latest uh, world roller games um and you had a couple of really nice games uh, when I'm thinking about one of them was against Germany uh that that you won um for example but uh in your uh, in your own experience what was the the highlight of, of those last of those latest wor- uh, world roller games I think you you hit the the highlight for every player on that that trip that Germany game was was something else we had Game one that year, we had a tight loss to 
Taipei in a game which we could have really could have picked a point out of and then the next day we beat Macau quite convincingly and we didn't really have to get out of first gear to get the result there so we knew Germany was a big game and but we also knew that if we play our game we're, we have a chance of beating these guys um, they went I think they were ahead most of the game and we just kept going back and going back I think it was about 50 seconds remaining when Luke pits in this unbelievable mid-air shot and the the feeling of we've tied this game against a really good hockey nation. Like we're 500 members in Ireland. I'm sure Germany has multiple thousands and they have big ranks. They have loads of players to pick from. We're very limited in what we have and it's probably the, the, probably the biggest shock result of the roller games, in my opinion, like we're we're a team in sort of bottom six teams, and Germany are in around eight to sixteen, so a huge result for them. Yeah, I think uh, everyone here, and I can speak uh, believe for everyone that we are all proud of the of this progress that the the national team has made. But um, also, what do you think that what what can Ireland do to? To try in in the in the long in the medium term and possibly in the long term, uh, try to achieve uh, and compete with the the highest team uh, in 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 the competition, such as the USA or uh, Italy or the, um, Czech Republic. What do you think that Ireland needs to do to to be able to compete against those kind of teams? Right now, we just need to take it one step at a time. Like we can't be looking to climb eight places in a year. If we climb one place, we've got to be happy with that. But to be honest, the men's team is, there isn't an overly amount of competition for places. Like there's maybe a few guys left out, but you get look younger and younger. There's more competition for places as more teams at the younger ages. So we just need to play young players to keep working hard to push us in a few years time, us old guys out of the team and to have proper competition for, 12 guys and two goalies to to go in terms of then being able to climb the, the ranks properly it ultimately comes down to facilities to be able to train the way we want to go out and play not just once once a year but to have that regular practice time and a full rink and the regular game time on a big rink it would be huge huge benefits to the national team and we all we all hope it uh, it will come to that in, in a couple of uh, couple of years and sooner than later preferably uh so now um i'll just uh, remind our audience here that you're also the, the under 16 national team coach uh for the european championship that uh, that would hopefully take place next summer uh let's hope so uh so you you've been coaching so far the, the under 16 team and a uh, couple of questions come come to mind, and what would be your take on the players that you that you have observed, and what are the qualities both on court and off court that you are looking for in a player? As mentioned, uh, as you look younger and younger, the the depth and talent is a a lot more. Like if you look at the list of players we had to pick from to pick a team for under sixteen this year, you'd have left you'd have left really good hockey players behind, which is a good thing. You've got players wanting to work hard and prove that they should go. Um, again, all these players are inexperienced to playing on small on big ranks, so they all have a small rank style of hockey, which is all right hands, shoot from anywhere, skating okay, but the, all these individual skills can be worked on upon. In terms of what we're looking for and as a the coaching team and players like on the rink, we're looking for players that have really good basics that can skate forwards and backwards well, can turn turn quick, stop quick, skate in any direction, um, make good smart passes, make the right sh shot, the right pass, the right time, and always working hard off the rink. We're looking for people that are easy to get on with and aren't gonna be a, a problem within a team and think they're better than anyone else in the team and think it's about them. So we're looking for players that have a team mentality and that are going to go work hard for everyone in that room. So I would like to come to, to go 
So a lot of things very, very interesting here about what you said. And at first I would like to, to come back on, on the fact, you know, of not having big rinks. And um, we can see that compared to countries that have those facilities, uh, they are really able to really get this uh, kind of possessing uh, game that uh, inline hockey requires. And so this kind of affect the, the game and we, we can see that. Um, so uh, the main focus that, that we can have is then, as you said, uh, uh, focus on the individual skills and uh, really uh, get players that are more into quality. Um, so what do you think that the clubs can do to, to help, you know, uh, get uh, even more talented players and players which have more quality in terms of skating, shooting, and stick handling. What do you think the clubs can do to help in, in um, that regard? A couple of things is, I know it's hard in some clubs, like my club, we, we can only train once a week because of the facilities we have and the access we have. But if you can, if clubs can increase the the access to, to hockey, it's multiple times a week and people are getting more rink time, more puck time, more skating time. It's all is one plus one is always going to equal two. It's always going to improve. And again, it's focus on the clubs need to f continue to focus on the basics, basic skating, basic passing. If you can't get the basics right, you're, there's no point being able to pull these fancy moves. And if you can only skate at an average level, so a lot of progress to be made on on individual skills and, and basic skills. So hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll get to, to that point at some point. And uh, yeah. Uh, and, and if we're going to, if the island is going to the under 16 national, um, uh, to the European championship, well, we, we hope for the best for very, for first uh, good impression. Uh, now I uh, will change the subject. And I would like to mention that this is your third year as a chairperson of the IHA, right? So um, I would like to briefly talk about the, the progress of inline hockey in Ireland that, that we have witnessed over the past few years. Uh, do, you, do you think it has been, do you also think it has been positive? And in your opinion, what would be the, the next steps for, for our sport in the country? Um, yeah, I agree that we've made some good steps in the last few years. Probably not to the length of steps that we kind of envisioned a few years ago as a committee, but if you just have to look at some stats that there's more junior players playing inline hockey, there's more junior clubs, there's more competitive leagues. We're not no longer seeing blowout games at any league. We're seeing tight, hotly contested leagues. Like you take the elite league, for example, there's one day left and three teams can win the league. That's in my time, that's never been on the cards. And then you look at you again, if you look down at under 12, I think there's, two or three teams that can realistically go and win the league. So we're seeing a lot more comp competitive action. Um, as we've talked already about national teams sort of being relaunched in the last few years, not just the senior men's, but we've had the junior men go to Barcelona last year. We've had junior teams go to Sparta Cup the last few years. We had under 13s and under 15s preparing for France this year, which unfortunately is not happening because of coronavirus. We've had senior women who have been active the last few years and are making progress towards competing on the international stage too. And then if back to the domestic game, we've had if you look at the events we put on, the playoffs 2019, I think was something special for everyone involved. It's never been done on that scale in Ireland before. And to have a proper facility where we can have spectators and sort of showcase the sport it's only gonna lead to more development getting more interest in the sport which leads to more members hopefully more media attention more sponsors so less financial strains on in the individuals the the long run hope yes. um because next, it, it, it is a very a big problem for uh, national team players because since we're on an island we have to systematically take um, a flight to to go to international events so uh, as you said uh, getting more sponsors is, uh, is something that that would be good yeah sorry i interrupted you no um that's right um sort of you talked about next steps is sort of continuing on taking a small step at a time to continuing developing the local game and from a IHI point of view, you want to give clubs more tools to help achieve that success. 
in terms of helping to ed educate all coaches better so that a player in any part of the country is going to receive quality training and it's not relying on a local individual being a good coach and or in an, another place and a local guy is motivated and working hard but maybe doesn't have the same coaching capabilities as other people um so we want to work towards giving clubs more tools like that um obviously we want more facilities but that's uh, the biggest pressure is in terms of finance and we're constantly working towards trying to get sport island recognition and we hope to have news on that front in the next few months but but even then sport island applications are going to be a few years out before we're making any progress there and just we just want to keep assisting clubs to achieve that facility dream like we're seeing work done in cork kilkenny constantly just chatting other places to you about wanting to start projects which is only good news so but uh i think you would agree that it would be better if we had more clubs being able to and actually more clubs in terms of number being able to start youth programs because um uh, what's your take on, on clubs that, that have um only senior teams but no youth programs not that, not that there isn't anything wrong with it but what do you, what what kind of incentive could we make to to help those only senior clubs to start a youth program what so yeah that's a good question last year we launched um ccd which is clubs contribution for development so we basically start off with clubs have zero points and if they're doing various things towards them whereas that's having junior clubs more teams, more members, um, producing media in their local area, showing attention, um, referees in the sport, volunteers in the sport. So the clubs that are doing more things, their fee as a club is going to be much lower as opposed to a club that just has a collection of senior players where their, their fee is going to be more. So it's going to be financially motivated that clubs should be encouraged to, to do more and contribute more to the game rather than consume the game. You mentioned about senior clubs. I think if a senior club is only one team, they're not a club, they're just a team. Would you look at the clubs, they have senior teams and junior teams, and is, that's a proper club. Is there right. a distinction there between... We have seen in recent years, teams going that way. You look at Clare in the last 18 months have developed juniors. Mayo in the last couple of years have started juniors. And I'm sure more are going to be pushed towards that route now. Well, let's hope so. So um, we're coming to the time of, of the questions. So uh, if the audience uh, wants to, to ask questions, you can just leave a message in, in the global chat. And um, and uh, we're, going to get, we're going to unmute you and you can ask questions directly to, to Michael if you want to. So I'm just going to drop a message here. All right, so just type, I have a questions in the, in the chat if you have a questions for Michael. All right, and in the meantime, we, we wait for, for the audience if they, if they want to ask questions. Um, well, anyway, uh, thank you a lot, Michael. Uh, just one question since you're, you're the chairperson. When, even though given the situation of the COVID-19 right, right here right now, when could we expect the, the next AGM uh, for, for the IHI to to happen um usually it's in june every year but obviously it right now depends on when a malady resumes whether it's in june or push later in the year or whether it's done on the internet or via different methods it's yet to be decided and one little question is because since last year we weren't that many uh, to be there. Uh, can anyone come? Any club uh, members, even young players, come to, to those sessions? Yeah, any member of if I, IHI is in, entitled to come along to the AGM. Okay. But as, as you know, it's a, a thrilling affair. 
Uh, are you all also planning to, to do it on in Gormanston like last year? Um, most likely it's a pretty central location for, for everyone and their <laughs> facilities wise for meetings there's better than anything we've had previously. Oh, I guess we're all looking forward to it. Okay, I have a question from uh, Marek. So Marek, I'm just gonna go over here and unmute you. You'll be able to ask your question directly to, to Michael. Come on, Marek, you, you have the mic. Hi, Michael. Hello. What happened if all the, all the league will be canceled this year? Will you choose any winner or what happened with the league standings, you know? Because as you know, the Bayern and Wanderers leave the league, but there are still four more, four more teams who can still play the playoffs. What happened after if you choose, if you decide all the leagues will be cancelled? Um, right now, we only have one champion crowned, and if you take the direction of professional ice hockey leagues across Europe that have cancelled, they've just crowned no champion. If you look at, I think, was Slovakia crowned a champion, and then there was a backlash over it, and then they've rescinded the champion. So I think the most likely outcome, if if the leagues are cancelled, is there will be no champion for those various leagues. But our hope right now is that the leagues will resume at some point. It's not it's not like we're waiting around paying players or players have to go home to a different country. If players are all in their local areas. We don't have that sort of time pressure to, to finish up sooner, even if the league takes to finish in August or early September, it's still a possibility. Uh, so that plan, it's if you cancel all the leagues, that nobody goes down and nobody goes up? It's, or what's it from it's, to be, it's, to be, okay. it's to be decided exactly how we would handle promotion relegation and what would happen in that regards. Cool. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. No worries. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions? We still have a couple of, a little bit of time to, to take at least one more. I see Joe. Joe has a question. Just let me open it up. Uh, hey, Joe, I'm just going to and you too. Over here, Joe, you have the mic. Go ahead. Hey guys, um, Mike, with um, Gormanstown proving to be a bit of a success on the playoffs last year, have the league considered hosting rounds of games, not just the playoffs, but yeah. rounds of games in general? Um, at the location, would it be financially viable? Um, considering we could get the bigger rink in place, would it not be beneficial to all teams to play on a rink that size and have that facility available more often throughout the year? Yeah, it would be absolutely beneficial, but I think you've hit the, the answer to your own question there, financially viable. Gormanston as a facility is reasonably priced, but compared to regular league games, it's a bit out of stretch. Oh, it is on it is on our agenda to try and try and make it possible, but financial viable may be an issue and the the work the le the level of work that went into putting off the playoffs far outweighs any game day and it spent I think our build time was between five and six hours. So if we were to do it it'd have to be a similar sort of situation where we're a lot of leagues involved in the same weekend. But it is something we're we're looking at. Okay, cool. I have a second question if you have time for it. We still have time. You can go ahead. All right, so this, this might be a bit of a, an awkward one for you, Michael, considering the position you're in, but do you think in terms of the national team that it's time that the, the seniors consider bringing up more junior players so that they're getting a better level of development rather than keeping juniors down in junior teams while senior men who are sort of 30 plus are skating around on rinks that are too big for them without without the right level of skill 
um, and, and that's no no harm or offence to, to many of the people who played in that national team, uh, you know, either in Barcelona or Italy. But do do we not feel that we have the juniors who are, we know are coming up through the system and should be getting a taste of what it's like to be there rather than fulfilling people's dreams to, to yeah, play? Uh, I think it's a question for the, the coaching staff, but yeah. The coaching team should be looking to put together the best team to represent Ireland. The ultimate goal of senior men is to finish as highly as possible. But if that's a decision between a younger player and an older player that are the same level, the preference should go to the player that is younger. It's going to gain more in the long run to be a contributing member for, for years to come and not just the one or two years. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you look at some of the these great young players that have come through, they're actually going to be too young for for junior men when when it comes around to 2021 so i'm envisioning a lot more competition for guys next year hopefully all right so um, i think uh, our time is up here thank you joe for your question uh so thank you again michael for for being there for the first national uh, hockey thursday talk uh and i would like to thank you uh to thanks everyone who joined uh today and see you all next week for another Hockey Thursday talk. We'll be presenting our guest speaker uh, in the coming days for, for next week. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it all. And see you, in a, see you next week. Thanks, Ken. Thank you all. Thank you, Bye. Dan.